Hi and welcome. Today I am planning to make an abstract watercolor journal spread. I am working in the art journal from Kunst und Papier. It's a watercolor journal. Um, the paper is not the heaviest, but it's a really nice quality and the book has a lot of pages. Um, I'm playing intuitively today as I don't have any colors in mind. Usually I am picking a color palette and then I use those colors, but today it's kind of a busy day and um, I just wanted to play a little bit. This color is one of the Schminke granulating colors. I don't know which color exactly it is. Um, I really like them, but um, you need a little bit of time to activate those colors. I feel it's always with the Schminke paints that you need a little bit more time to get them reactivated other than, for example, the core watercolors or the Mijello. When I have a busy day and want to be a little bit creative, I like to create these kind of pages because usually it doesn't take a lot of time and then you have some drying times in between and so I can play for example 10 or 15 minutes and then I let that dry and later on the day I come back and add some more to the page. I really like how these paints flow together and you already can see the granulation. Here I'm adding in a little bit of a core watercolor. This is the high flow watercolor from Golden and its property is to push away other pigments and that gives you really interesting effects and that also gives you the possibility to mix complementary colors because the orange will push away the blue and the violet. I feel this process is super relaxing and perfect if you need some time to rest and just want to do something for yourself. The brush I'm using, by the way, is called a mop brush in German. They also call it French watercolor brush. And I really love this one because it takes a lot of water. And as it's so big and chunky, it 
forces me to stay loose, especially when I do abstract watercolor paintings. This dark red is also one from the super granulating colors from Schminke. I used it on the square on the right, but there the color was not activated very much. So you can see a big difference. I also really love how this flows into the pink. The pink is the Opera Rose and I think it's the one from Rosa Gallery. I really like this color combo that I've picked. Um, it's kind of a rainbow color scheme, just a little bit of the bright colors. It's going more into yeah, muted tones a little bit. I think that's because of the granulating colors I am using. I'm not 100% sure which color I want to pick here for the last square, um, but I think the Schminke color with the high granulation will work fine as a contrast between those lighter um, squares. I'm adding in a little bit of magenta from the core colors. I will let this dry now and do something else. This is what I like to do on a busy day. That has been about 10 minutes now, a little bit less, and that's easy to fit into every day, I would say. And when it's dry, I will be back and add some more textures. I'm using the Durband pencils. This is one of the graphite tint, which is water soluble graphite with kind of a color. And I also use the Durband Ink Tense pencils, which are also water soluble ink pencils. I really love their bright colors. I do some really intuitive mark making here. I'm just playing and scribbling, it's super relaxing. And I also never mind if something goes wrong, I just play. If something goes wrong, this is just a sketchbook. It's not, not a drama if it doesn't look good in the end. But usually um, it does look good. And you always can add some collage elements to cover up areas that you don't like. This kind of page is also a good idea for a warm-up exercise if you are not in a creative mood but you have maybe a lot of time to do something then just to start you can create such a page. I'm not sure if you can hear the noise in the background. My neighbor is cutting his grass. I had the windows open before and we had some nice birds in the background. But now it's really loud outside. With these pencils I sometimes dip the nib into water to get a darker, um, darker line because the pigment is water soluble.
and usually I always add patterns or textures in at least two areas of my painting so that I have uh, something that is redundant so the viewer can search for the same pattern on the whole spread and that makes it a bit more interesting. What I also do to make a piece interesting is I have a lot of a big tonal range so I have tonal values from really light to really dark. I now go in with my stamps to add some more texture and I decided to use that tiny rainbow from the clear set from the pencil marks number three and I want to stamp it in yellow into the yellow areas. It might be a bit difficult to stamp directly onto an alternate page if the book is pretty bulky. Um, this one is laying flat because I'm only working on the right side of the pages and so it works out pretty fine. And also when I'm doing this kind of background stamping I don't really mind if the impression is perfect or not. I plan to stamp in pink um, into these areas and I'm using this stays on ink here. My stamp is a little bit blue so I'm not sure if it will mix into the pink so I just make a test print on the left and I think it's fine. I only add some accents of the stamp, not the full impression, just some touches here and there. For my main image, I plan to use this leaf stamp from the same set and I want to stamp it with black ink to get, um, yeah, to make it look or stand out more than all the other textures. And I'm using VersaFine Clay to stamp that because it's the best ink if you need a perfect image. It can be a bit tricky to stamp over watercolor paper when it's textured, but this one works really nice, especially with the ink. I want to stamp two of the leaves um, a little bit behind of each other, so I need a mask um, to mask off the first image. And I'm using a post-it note and I'm stamping the part that needs to be saved onto the post-it note and then I will cut that out and stick it over the image that is already on my page so I can stamp a second one. I think that's really nice. It looks as if the two leaves would be behind of each other. As these are black, I feel that I need a little bit more black 
on my page so they are not alone with this color and I want to use one of the stitched borders from the mixed media borders to just make some of the squares look like as if they were sewn together. I'm adding the stamp to an acrylic block but then I decided to just use it without it to so I can decide where I will make the print. And what I also want to add is some black splatters. I'm using black watercolor here and I just um, mix it very well with water um, to get a really deep black color. I want to stamp this old book page stamp to the bottom of my arrangement and I'm using post-it notes to mask um, kind of a border on the bottom. Um, I think I will not use black ink for this, I will use some grey ink so that text does not stand out extremely against the other stuff. I'm not happy with my first print here because it's a little bit too much down on my page, um, but I don't mind that. I will go in later with the neo colors, and then I can just cover that up a little bit by add some by adding some scribbles. The new colors are water soluble crayons. Um, I really love to use them for all kinds of stuff. I use them for drawing in my sketchbook and also for my art journal pages and sometimes for um, backgrounds, for mixed media tags or artist trading cards. You will find a lot of videos on my channel using these crayons. I will link up the playlist in the end cards so you can check out the other videos with those um, neo colors. It's also very intuitive what I'm doing now. I'm just scribbling, making lines and sometimes I'm looking through my camera to see where something's missing and where I want to add some more. Finally, I decided that I want to have the leaves pop up a bit more from my background and I'm coloring them in with a light colored pencil. This is a Derwent drawing pencil. 
I usually use it in my sketchbook. It's really a soft pencil and very opaque. I believe the color is smoke blue and I love to use it. Um, I just bought a second pencil because I used it so much that my first one is pretty small now. Um, I just color in those leaves very loosely so it's not perfect but it just makes them stand out a bit more against the background. I finally decide to add a little bit of the white neo color to give the leaves some highlights. Yes, and that's my page for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're a little bit inspired to also play and create with your watercolors and all those art tools that you maybe have laying around. I wish you a wonderful weekend and I hope we will see us next time. Bye!